I never really grew up with this dream to have a talk show of sorts. I did speech and debate in high school, and I competed regionally and nationally and got okay at it. Um, I won a couple tournaments, and we were able to develop a skill of speaking and a skill of communications where I'm like, this is really fun. Mm -hmm. I enjoy this talking, this, this you know, Q&A back and forth, this debate style of engagement. I enjoy this. And then we did speaking on top of it, so we did different types of speeches. And when I got to LSU, I started on the speech and debate team at LSU and then realized that at the collegiate level and the high school level, it's two different atmospheres. Mm -hmm. And the collegiate level atmosphere was just not what I was after. Mm -hmm. It's not something I was really able to get behind and pursue, so I kind of dropped off from there. But when I was at LSU, and I'm getting my minor in entrepreneurship, and then the entrepreneurship department comes to me and says, we want you to convert and get a major in entrepreneurship. And I'm like, I've got a major in accounting. And they said, well, we're gonna, you can get a paired degree. So they said, we're still developing the program and the curriculum and the bachelor, so you're gonna be the first one. So I was the first one to officially graduate with a Bachelor's of Science from LSU with an entrepreneurship degree. That so is I've got so two, cool. So I've got two degrees, accounting and entrepreneurship, and when I was in the classes, everybody kept telling me, we can't wait to leave Baton Rouge. We can't wait to leave Louisiana. Mm -hmm. There's no opportunity. There's no cool businesses. Nobody's doing anything here. It's just a, it's a dud of a town. Mm -hmm. And I wholeheartedly disagreed with them because mm -hmm. while they were partying, again, I'm engaging with the professors. I'm engaging with the guest lecturers, the business owners that are coming talk to our entrepreneurship classes. I am getting as much involved in the community as I can yeah. rather than partying. And I'm like, there's so much opportunity here. And so this was in uh, late 18. So I was kind of just exploring what I could do. And podcasting was just starting to come on the scene as a mainstream form of content. And I started doing research into podcasting, started listening to them and started figuring out what is this exactly. And I always thought of it from a marketing perspective. I'm like, well, every business needs to have one of these. It's this dedicated platform that you can say whatever you want. You're not regulated. You can talk about any topic under the sun. Every business needs to have this to pursue their business agenda. They need to talk about it. They need to post this stuff. This is phenomenal. So I pitched it to the, my parents and my dad was like, no one's gonna listen to us talk about toilets. We're out. <laughs> I pitched it to the accounting firm and they're like, that's giving away our advice for free. We're out. And I'm like, okay, that's great. I got two no's. <laughs> Nobody's gonna do this, but it still kept harping on me. I'm like, I need, I wanna do a podcast. I want to continue conversations that I'm having outside of the classroom with people. I wanna record it and publish it. So then I thought of, well, I'm having conversations with people. They're business owners. We're collaborating. I'm helping some students get some businesses off the ground. We're having really cool conversations. Why don't I just start documenting this stuff and not really create a podcast around like the office or food or any given topic? I'm like, why don't I just document my conversations with people and make that into a podcast? More importantly, why don't I do this with Baton Rouge business owners and then I can start promoting and really getting the word out there of what we have to offer here in the area, in the community, in the state, from what I know and experience that everybody should know in my opinion. Mm -hmm.